just for the people watching right now, this isn't a FaceTime call. This isn't a Zoom call. You're in prison right now. Yeah, I'm on a GTO video visit. I, I was hitting licks. I, my thing was, yeah, I was getting paid, but it was more so of a me being an inpatient kind of guy. You were in here with us doing all these Reentry Network podcast episodes. We heard so many stories. Like, did any of those stories have you thinking while you were doing this? Like, I can really get caught up and ruin my life right now. Did that Did that ever cross your mind? I had everything planned out. Like, it was. It just didn't go as I planned it to. When they told me 12 years, I was lost for the simple fact of I didn't know if I was going to make it home. Did your mind go to, damn, I may end up in prison from this situation? Did your mind go there at all? Or did you think this was just, okay, I'm going to be in here for like two weeks, be out? By the time eight o'clock hit, the whole block was full of cop cars. They they were all on us. What's your take on friendship now? Like a lot of the people you were hanging with on the outside, have any of those relationships changed or not even changed? Like, do you view friendship different since being in there? Because a lot of people that I used to hang out with they, and, and talk to and associate with, a lot of them turned their back on me when I when I came when I when they found out I was in prison. I told my daughter, I said, "Baby, I love you. I'll be home." I'll mm. come back tonight. I'll see you tonight. Mm. And once I got booked, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, I messed up. He didn't come to court with y'all. He was with y'all. So you basically saying he told, he was telling. Yeah, once he separated his case, we knew that it was. We got to address the elephant in the room, this big ass face tat that you got, bro. So just. <laughs> My dad got sentenced for murder. August 28, 2003. I got charged and booked August 28, 2023 for robbery, conspiracy, and grand theft. Life lessons made me change. Sensei Kai checking in, Dojo Sessions. Um, we got a very special guest today. Um, I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about it. So, Looney, he's been with us from the beginning of the podcast before we had any of this that y'all see here, and we just had a gray wall. Looney was on the team with us grinding in here, coming up with the concept, everything we had going. Um, he's been here from the beginning. So today, I just wanted to bring him on. I didn't want to wait for him to come out, but, you know, he here with us right now. Looney, how you feeling, man? Man, I'm feeling good, man. For sure. You holding up good? Everything been all right with you? For the most part, for the most part, just staying mental. Yeah, man, I know it's crazy, bro, because, like, you've been here since the beginning of all this, bro. So even seeing it now, I know it looks real crazy. You went in, we still had a gray wall, huh? Did we have any of this when you went in? Yeah, I had the black, the, yeah, it started off with the gray wall. Then it went to the, to the black, the pieces on the back. I wasn't there for the windows, the TVs. I wasn't there for none of that, but I remember when we switched up the room with the chairs and took the desk away. And I remember all of that. That's what sucks, bro, because, you know, the fact that you were here from the beginning and now you back there, I didn't want to wait for you to get out to start incorporating you onto the channel because a lot of the stuff we said we were going to do, we're doing it now. So I'm like, nah, man, I don't want to wait for you to get out. Like, let's just start getting you on the page. I know, like, you've learned so much, like, while being in there. But you've been holding up all right, though, like, first and foremost? Uh, for the most part, I've been hanging, hanging in there. Mm -hmm. it's, it started off difficult, but I got it. I, I got it. I got it all, everything into play. So. For sure. Like, difficult how, though? Uh, it started off with a lot of fighting in the county due to, to gangbanging politics and racial politics. So then once I got to reception, it was more of a, a respect aspect. It was still a little bit of fighting, but once I got to the main line, it was everything's a respect aspect. As long as you stay in your lane and respect yourself and respect the yard, it's, it's not too many problems. But let's take it back though. So, cause I did want to touch on that, but I just want to start it back from you being here with us. What happened that actually led up to this? I feel like I know a little bit of the details, but what did you actually do that got you in it? Uh, well, according to my charges, I had, I was, I was in the process of, I, I was hitting licks. I, my thing was, 
yeah, I was getting paid, but it was more so of a me being an impatient kind of guy. I didn't want to wait on the on the paycheck. So every day after work, I'd go hit the field. And when I referred to the field, I referred to a second job in, in my eyes. So I was robbing stores, coming out with big ass trash bags, uh, shoes, clothes, hygiene, and just doing all kinds of stuff that led up to it. So once they finally started the paper trail on me, it was not, it wasn't going to be long before I knew I was going to prison. So this, so this was every day? The paper trail on me, August. This was every day that you were doing this? This was every day. Every, every day. Every day. So when we would see you and be in podcast mode, you already in your mind like I'm about to go clock in. Yeah, pretty much. I, as, soon, as soon as the podcast ended, I'm, I'm like, okay, time to lock in and I hang out with with certain people for a little bit. After that, I'm I'm in I'm in my mode. And y'all had like it was like a crew, like your friends, or it was just like you was on it just with one person. Yeah, it was kind of like it was. It started off as a big group, but then it, that specific day I got caught, it it was only four of us. Yeah, I remember. Um, you know, we mentioned it just in our personal talks, kind of what was going on, but. Like, on some real shit, do you feel like it got to a point where you got a little greedy with it? Because every day, I get it. I know you were looking for a job at that time. I know you were. I know you were trying. We tried to get you some stuff. But at, at a certain point, you feel like you kind of got greedy with it, man? Like, for real? Uh, in a sense, yes. Yes, I do. When did you realize it, though? Like, way before, way before you got caught up or towards the latter half of you getting caught up? Uh, the, the better half of me getting caught up. Was it ever a thought to stop, though? Or you was just saying, like, man, this is getting crazy. I got to keep going. Uh, I didn't feel like I was being greedy to a certain extent, but eventually, as I was sitting in the county, it, it, it kind of pawned, down pawned against me that I was being greedy. So. Yeah. I know it's tough, though, because, you know, you were doing it for a reason, you know, financially for yourself. You tried to get a job. I know that for a fact. But let me ask you something, though. The fact that you were, you're sitting in prison right now. Before that, though, you were in here with us. You were in here with us doing all these Reentry Network podcast episodes. We heard so many stories. Like, did any of those stories have you thinking while you were doing this? Like, I can really get caught up and ruin my life right now. Or did that, did that ever cross your mind? Uh, with certain individuals that we were doing, yes, but at the same time, it was it was more so the saying that Granny used to tell us, a, a hard head makes for a soft behind, so it was like, I had to learn it on my own, you feel me? No, I feel you. That's something we're going to get into. I know you learned a lot of life lessons. Uh, how old are you right now? I'm 23. I came down when I was 22. Yeah, man, I'm already knowing, man, like so young already. I know it's a lot you learned because even as I've been talking to you over these past weeks, it's a lot of changes I realized as well. Take me to that day, though, that you got caught up, like the day that you actually went down. Because I remember I think I saw you two days before, and next thing we knew you were locked up. Like what happened that day? Yeah, that day um, I was chilling at my big mama's house uh, with my daughter, I woke up that morning. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get me. I'm gonna go make a couple of dollars so I can take take my daughter out to go eat and stuff. So I'm like, I told I told her stepdad. I'm like, hey, I'll give you a hundred dollars just to go take me to to these two stores, which was a Ross and a shoe warehouse. Yeah. I said it doesn't matter if it goes south. If I don't make the money that I was supposed to do, your hundred is secure. All I need you to do is drive. He's like, okay, I'll do it. So we go do that. I pass, I make like three, four hundred in less than an hour because I hit, I ended up hitting both stores. Boom. Then my cousin, my cousin hits me up. He's like, he's like, cousin, I, I'm broke right now. I'm down on my feet. So I need some help. I'm like, all right, well, I'm mobile. Uh, I got a car right now. I'm, I'm able to maneuver. So I'm like, all right, grab the homie and y'all come, come to my big mom house. So they pull up to my big mom house like an hour or two later. They're like, all right, let's go. 
I'm like, all right. I tell them the game, the game plan. I'm like, we're gonna hit this door, this door, and this door. After that, we're done. Like, we're coming home. We're gonna wait till everything dies down. So, we go. Uh, we hit the stores. The first one was was a bust, which means it didn't go as planned. So we left that one, went to a different city, hit the two, those two, left. We were supposed to go back to my baby mama's house to get my her stepdad's license plate because the place where we go drop the product off, which is downtown MacArthur Park, any car with no license plate is automatically suspicious. They automatically think it's stolen or has to do with a submission of a crime. So I told them like, nah, we gotta go back to the house to get the license plate. And they're like, nah, let's just go get this stuff out the car. I'm like, nah, I don't feel like that's right. Because mind you, I had just did it earlier. This is my second time today, that day doing it. So I'm like, let's go back to the house. They didn't want to listen. So we ended up going downtown. We get downtown to MacArthur Park, and it was like six or seven o'clock at night. So by that time, where the police is hot, I know I know they're hot because that's when everybody starts bringing their stuff. So they peeped the car. I guess they made their police report at the Ross. The Ross called it in, so they was already looking for us. Yeah. So they seen the car there. We're at one stop, like going, I want to say north. They're at the op, they're at the at the cross point, so they're driving past. We're at a red light at the front. I told him stay between the cars because you didn't have no license plate. You didn't want to listen to me, so stay between the cars. He takes it upon his will to go into the turning lane where there's no cars. I said, okay, boom, that's cool. You did that. As I'm realizing what's going on, I then go, I then proceed to throw all of the product into the back of the truck. I'm like, okay, I gotta get this off my lap. Were they were they in and pursuit? They around, were they in pursuit at this time? Car, car. So they weren't in pursuit at this time. You just peeped the situation. No, they were not. They were not in pursuit of, at the time. They were just driving by. But oh, okay. Driving by, I'm looking at the pad, the officer in the passenger seat, make direct eye contact at me. And the driver. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, but well, we we already messed up. I told you you didn't want to listen. That's we're past that now. I'm now at the in the mode of okay, I'm gonna ditch the car and I'm gonna run. I'm gonna go hide out in the park. I'm gonna go into one of these homeless people's tent. I'm gonna go swap clothes and do the whole nine because we had just stole a gang of clothes. So I'm not worried about what I put on because at the end of the day, I, if I sit long enough, I'll be able to get away. So mm -hmm. he ends up locking the door as I'm saying, I'm going to get out. He locks out everybody in the car. So it's the driver, me, my cousin, and one of the homies from Linwood. So we're all stuck in the car. He's like, nah, don't worry about it. They're just going to give me a, a ticket for, uh, for not having no license plate. Boom, I already knew that was going to go south because, for my, mind you, we just hit all these stores and we came directly down here. There's no way to maneuver. So he pulled over as they turned around and blurred this. It's about, it started off with one car. By the time 8 o'clock hit, the whole block was full of cop cars. They, they were all on us. And then... My little side piece that I was dealing with at the time, her sister was down there turning in some product. So I'm like, okay, mind you, I was supposed to go to her house after I went and dropped some money off to my daughter. Mm -hmm. And she ended up calling my girl at the time, and she's like, well, I, f I see why, you're, why, why, why your boyfriend's not answering the phone. He's down here. He's held up. So she's, mind you, I feel my phone ringing in my pocket, all kind of stuff. But you're held so, up at this point with the officers and everything. They had already got y'all out the car. They're seeing what's going yeah, on pretty had, much. Yeah, they, they then get us out the car as my phone is ringing. I can't touch my phone. They can, I can't do none of that because they already had their gun drawn. And in the report, it says there was a sharp, a sharp object involved. So 
any sudden movement, anything foul that I would have did, they would have automatically probably shot me. So I'm sitting there letting my phone ring. I'm not answering it. I'm not doing none of that. So they get us all out the car one by one. And then we're standing there while they search the car for like, we're standing there for maybe two hours before they even get the report from the Ross. So once they get that report, they're like, okay, me and the homie hear it on the walkie talkie. So we're like, yeah, we're going to jail. We'll do, we're trying to get, everybody's trying to get their story together. I was going to ask you that real quick, real quick though, Looney. In that two hours they had y'all detained, it was four of y'all, right? Was anybody already talking or was everybody still just maintaining that silence? Was anybody starting to break? Everybody was, everybody was maintaining silence because we were like, okay, we were sitting there for so long. We're like, okay, they haven't heard. We haven't heard nothing on the walkie-talkie. We don't know if they have a report on anything. So we're like, okay, we might be in the clear. But... After that two-hour waiting period and them searching the car and everybody, all the officers standing there, they're like, it was a, we heard it on the, on the radio. They said four suspects all in a, all in a range, three in a range of six foot, five eleven and six foot, and one between the, the height of five four and five eight. Yeah. So, and they, all, they it said african-american that described all of us so we're like boom that that's out of the question then they started describing the clothes and that day i was in a hoodie some black sweats some air maxes and a black boston b hat that i had just bought so it wasn't hard to make out who we were yeah and they ended up i was supposed to end up, i was really supposed to throw my ski mask out of the car, I had everything planned out. Like it was, it just didn't go as I planned it to. So let me so let I me ask you though. Out, let me ask you though, Louis. So let me ask you. You said when y'all went on that first lick that day, something went wrong. What went wrong that that wasn't successful? Like what happened? Cause it looked like you already knew. Like maybe we should abort this for today. Like what happened on that first one? On that first one, they. They had armed guards. If the store automatically has armed guards, they have all right to draw a gun on them because they're, that's what they're paid for. Now, the, the difference between the, the ranks and security, if they don't have a gun, they're not allowed to touch you because it's a safety hazard mm -hmm. and, a, and a lawsuit aspect that can go on with that. Now, if they have a gun, they have all rights to threaten you, put their hands on you, snatch anything out of your hand. They can do all of that. Mm -hmm. So when I went earlier that day, the WSS had the armed guard. So I'm like, okay, boom, I'm going to abandon that one. I'm going to go to the Ross in the same parking lot. I go to that Ross. Wow, same ask, parking lot. That's where I made the, the three dollars $400. I forgot the exact amount that I made that morning. But boom, we turn around. That's when they called me. And I'm like, okay, boom, well, I got the score planned out because I still wanted to hit that that, that specific WSS. So, okay, so, so, same the parking lot. Was and all the extra stuff. So, so, same parking lot, though? So, you, you hit the second one, bro. It looks like you more so weren't even worried about not getting away. It was more so like, oh, how much money am I going to get out of there? Because even as you're like, okay, I'm going to hit this one. I know you knew, because I know you, we've talked before, I know you're a spiritual person, like, nothing in you was like, man, even though they still want to do this, I don't think this is what we need to do, or that day, you just wanted some bread, like, nothing in you was like, okay, man, we don't need to do this today, because that, that was a key moment in all this going down, it looked like you, you kind of knew. It, it sort of, kind of, like, after I hit my, my personal lick in the morning on my own, by, by myself. It went, and I dropped it off in the parking lot of the drop-off spot. It was weird because it was a bunch of undercovers over there. So I'm like, and they just kept watching the truck that I was in. So I'm like, yeah, uh, I shouldn't do it again. But if my cousin needs help because my his trailer his trailer just got blew up. Somebody just blew his trailer up. So we were trying to he was trying to get back on his feet so that. 
he could have some place to go and get a room or whatever he needed. So, okay, I got you. Okay, I'm gonna help you out. No, I got you. I got you. So, um, just taking it back, um, because I did want to know that they have y'all detained. At what point did you know? Okay, we're going down. After you hearing the walkie-talkie, hearing it describe y'all in detail, that's when your mind kind of shifted into, all right, I'm about to go to jail. Yeah. Okay. At that sure. moment, I knew I was going to jail. Mm-hmm. So from talking to you before, you kind of mentioned like how at difficult. That no, nah, for sure. So talking to you before, you kind of mentioned how difficult it was, that transition going into the county. Had you been to county before? Yeah, I've, I've been to county previously. Okay, so you already know what you were looking at going into there. You know, obviously, being from where you from, you already knew, okay, damn, not only did I get in trouble, but now I got to deal with these politics. Yeah. Okay, okay. We mentioned on the phone, like you were saying, it was a very difficult transition. When you got to the county... I asked you specifically if you've been there before because did your mind go to, damn, I may end up in prison from this situation? Did your mind go there at all? Or did you think this was just, a, okay, I'm going to be in here for like two weeks, be out? Um, to, uh, to be honest, I thought I was getting out, but once I got my list of charges, it was, I knew I was going to prison. There was no if, ands, or buts about it, no ways around it. For the simple fact that I didn't have the money for the attorney, so I ended up getting a public defender. So at that moment, I knew I, I knew it was a wrap. What were the charges? It was I had a, a count of conspiracy, I had three counts of robbery, and five counts of grand theft. Yeah. And they wanted they wanted to give me a total of twelve years, and I told them no. I told them I wouldn't take it. I told them. The least I was taking was five. So they, when I told my public defender that, that was the first question he asked me. He was like, well, how much time are you willing to take? Because there's no way around it. You're going into prison. The mm. DA is not liking your case. For some fact, though, they've been trying to catch you for so long. And they finally got a paper trail on you. They finally have pictures and videos and all kind of evidence on you. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, the most I'm willing to take it's five. I'm not doing no more. I do anything five and below. That's what I'm doing. So your mind was set on five? So, okay. Yeah, my mind was set on five. Mm -hmm. Really, it was set on a year to two, but I was not worried about... Yeah. The main thing I was worried about was not getting over eight to ten years. So I told him the middle point. I'm like, the most I'll take is five years. So once prison even so became like, a talking point, like once prison became a talking point at all, where was your mental health at that time? You were already locked up. You know, you got kids already on the outside. When they're talking about prison, five years, 12 years, like where are you right now mentally at this point? When they told me 12 years, I was, I was lost. I, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was lost for the simple fact of I didn't know if I was going to make it home. If they were to give me that 12 years, I didn't know if I was going to make it home because there's so much stuff that can happen within that 12 year time frame. Yeah. And the main thing, the main thing that was on the back of my mind was I messed up with my daughter because before I left that house that night to go on the second run, I told my daughter, I said, baby, I love you. I'll be home. I'll mm. come back tonight. I'll see you tonight. Mm. And once I got booked, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, I messed up. So that was my whole thought process when they tried to hit me with that 12 years. I'm like, do I take the 12 years or do I just go through with it? I'm like, yeah. I told my public defender, I'm like, Tell the DA I'm not taking that. So I go in the courtroom. Yeah. Me and my crime, two of my crimes. Well, we all started off in the same courtroom, but the driver ended up separating his case. He bailed out. So once we found out he bailed out, I'm like, okay, yeah, something's not right. We were all supposed to stick in this together. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna ask you. Go to court. He's not there. He's not in the courtroom with us. 
So I'm like, that's weird. Okay. Boom. I throw that to the side. So now I'm kind of mentally figure out what I can say mm -hmm. and get across to my other crimeys, which went in the store with me to where all our stuff adds up the same. So let me ask you though. So, so essentially you're saying this dude who you, 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 he didn't come to court with y'all. He was he with y'all. So you basically saying he told, he was telling. Yeah, once he separated his case, we knew that it was some side talking going on. Because even when we did get booked, he came out of the questioning room laughing and giggling and just out of other, not ordinary stuff you would come out of the, the, the questioning room doing. I mean, yeah. You know I mean? So, yeah. No, I feel you. So that, that's what that's what I was wondering. It seemed like it was something like that going on. Not to get you too sidetracked, but was that somebody you were like real locked in with outside of all this? Was that somebody you even should have trusted to be with you? My daughter's that that's my daughter's grandfather. So I, I was decently close with him. Your daughter's grandfather. Yeah. How old is he? He is forty six. And he was the driver. Yeah. Wow, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That's wild. Your daughter's... And it's the same daughter you had just talked to that you just mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. So, him being that age, knowing, you know, y'all, the relationship y'all have, he was fully okay with this. Like, you, y'all even going on a lick together. He didn't mention at one point, yo, like, you know, your daughter, I'm, I'm your daughter's grandfather. You're like, what? This is crazy, man. He didn't say nothing to you. He was just with it. Nah, not honestly, no, because he used to always say like, "Oh, I do this, I do that." I'm so one day, the day I woke up, I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna put him to the test. I'm gonna have you drive, just like that. I'm gonna pay you to drive. That's all you have to do. Wow. All you have to do is drive and make sure we get out of the maneuvers and make it to my destination. Once I make it to my destination. I put the money in your hand. That's all I needed him to do. And once we got caught, it was a wrap. I knew I knew something was off because the story I told him to tell, he did not tell. He said something totally different. So that's why I'm waiting on my. I still haven't received my discovery. All everybody else has received their discovery. I'm the only one that has not received the discovery. So still right now. Once I get that. Yeah, still to this day, I have I got my abstract of judgment. I have the overview of the court case with all the charges and the counts and stuff like that. But as far as what was said in the questioning room, what was said in the separation of the of the of the court sessions, I I don't have none of that. Who so, who all is still locked up? So he's obviously out. He's a free man. Yeah, he, he was charged. And sentenced to six months in the county jail, but he only did a day in the county jail, which, again, that's a red flag. It doesn't add up. How did you manage to only do one day out of the six months? Mm -hmm. So my cousin got a, a three-year joint suspension, which means if he gets in any trouble, he automatically goes to prison for three years straight. Um, so he's out. Yeah, he's out right now. So that's two but people. He, he's on a he's on a joint suspension, which uh -huh. means, like I said, if he gets in any trouble while he's out right now, he automatically goes to prison, no questions asked. Straight up. That was, the, that was his agreement. Okay, so who's the other person? Is one more person outside of you? Where are they at? They're in prison as well. Oh, okay. So okay. Me, me and the other individual from Linwood, we both took time. So. I took my deal first, which was three years. After they tried to bang me with the twelve, I saw I came back the next court date. They were like, "Okay, if you take, if you plead guilty to one count of rob second degree robbery, we'll give you three terms. We'll give you three years, which is the mid term." Okay, cool. I'm taking that. I'm not gonna play with. I'm not gonna play with you people because at the end yeah. of the day, I know what y'all do. No, I got the you. Is against me. The judge is really against me. I, I'm looking directly in the judge's eyes. He doesn't want to hear anything we have to say. So. Just give me my three years and let me go on about my business. So mm -hmm. the homie from Linwood, he continues to fight his case. So they dropped a lot of the charges on him and gave him four years with. Oh, he got four. Same. 
they gave him two years for a robbery, but his 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 time doubled because he had he just got out of prison, so they doubled his strike. No, I got you. And um, just for the people watching right now, this isn't a FaceTime call. This isn't a Zoom call. You're in prison right now. Yeah, I'm on a GTO video visit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're actually in prison right now. So the transition, you telling me kind of what they were going, what was going on? They were offering you the time. So when you find out, okay, I'm going to prison. Like, what was that transition like from the county which you've been to before to prison? Like, how was that for you? The, the, the transitioning point was, I, I told myself, okay, let me get out all the fighting and soak up all the game that I have to get from all my older homies and other OG homies from different hoods and even people that were non-affiliates, I'm soaking up game from all the older cats because they're like, oh, this is how this yard is, this is how that yard is, and this is how it gets when if if they smack you on a level four, but I had to tell people, I had to tell certain people, I'm like, I'm not going to a four yard, uh, I'm going to a two. Mm -hmm. They're like, because of the how the point system is now, they changed that like a couple years back. So now, seeing that this was my first time in prison, and I told them I, I didn't, they have no trail of me being a gang member. So, yeah. Because when they asked me all of the, uh, about my gang affiliation, I lied to them. I told them I didn't have nothing to do with any street activity, no street gangs. Um, I lied about all the tattoos on my body and certain, certain stuff that, if would have tied into my time and my levels of, of the prison yard. I mean, yeah, it would have been some enhancements on that for sure. For sure. So you get there the first day, just from these stories on reentry, you know, I've heard that county is actually harder than prison. Did that line up to be true? Or your first day in there, you yeah. like, okay, this is sweet. Yeah, being in, the, being in the county prepares you to go to prison. Well, at least LA County, that is. So yeah. it, it, it prepares you for these lower yards. Being in like, now if I would have got arrested in like Sacramento County or mm -hmm. something somewhere up here where I'm at, it would have got me ready for like the level threes and four, which is cell living. I'm in I'm in a in a dorm living, but it's like six man cells, so I'm really not tripping like that. Most of my cell most of my cells are lifers, so. Oh okay, I know we mentioned that before when we talked. Like, I know you've been soaking up a lot of game from people in there already. It's kind of, uh, I'm kind of yeah. seeing it in your maturity as well. So pretty much it's been a smooth transition. How long you been in prison so far? I've been in, I've been in prison since, well, I left reception. I got to reception February 2nd and I left rece reception to the main line April 4th. So I've been in prison on the main line since April however many months that is. Okay, okay. I'm going to say like four or five. No, I got you, man. You look healthy, bro, like you gained some weight too, man. Yeah, I gained a lot of weight. What you went in when? How, how much did you weigh? I weigh 163 right now. Well, when I got to prison, well, when I got to reception, I weighed 183. When I got to the main line, I started working out and turned some of that weight to muscle weight, so I'm 163. But when I first went down, I was 110. So. Wow. That's crazy, man. We got to address the elephant in the room, this big-ass face tat that you got, bro. So just, but yeah, so um, you went in, you had tattoos, but no face tat. Like, what, what, how did this face tat come about? Because that's the whole left side. That's the left side of your head or the right side of your head? In the camera so they can really see it. Okay, so the story behind this is in the county I had got my baby mama's name tatted on my face. So where? Where is I that? Kept her, I kept, yeah, in the county I had got my baby mama's name tatted. No, I'm saying where is that name though? Where is that name on your face right now? I, I, it, it got covered up. That's how this one came about. Oh, so got you. It's a whole story behind this. So when I left the county and I got to, to reception, I'm calling my baby mama I'm like. Add me on the on the video app. Add me on the video app so I can show you this tattoo. Cause I, in the county, I told her she's like, I don't believe you. I don't believe. You. I said, wait till I get to prison. I'm gonna show you. So she that she took like a cool three three four months to even add me on the app. So I'm like, you know what? You're, what? You don't add me at this certain time. I'm gonna cover it up. You're you're never gonna get to see it. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the girl that you tatted on your face didn't even add the app for three months? Yeah, which is my baby mom, my daughter's mom. So But bro, she, she three months mu- okay, that's yeah, three months is crazy. Okay. Yeah, I kept telling her and telling Damn. her and telling her she didn't want to do it. So I'm like, okay. you know what? I'm not even gonna let her see it at this point. Yeah. So you messed up that opportunity to even see it. So uh-huh. boom, I covered it up and it stands the Chanel sign stands for Compton Crip, but at the same time I don't endorse it as a gang tap. I I've created another acronym for it, which is Concrete Chop, because yeah, explain that's, that. That's basically what it is basically what made me. So I was always in the streets, always fighting and laying it on a on the concrete or putting somebody else on the concrete. So it helped mold me into who I become, and now I'm sitting in concrete walls. So it really shows the improvement that I made and I never wanted to forget it so I'm like okay let me find a, a symbol and I, it just popped up in my head like okay it stands for the city of where I'm from and what I do but it also stands for this so boom it ties in I said okay boom I'm gonna put that right there to cover it up and then also under it is music notes because for those who don't know I do music that's what I'm passionate about that's what I love and that's really what my career is outside of re-entry so I got you so let me ask you though because you already know the barriers you had with jobs before you went in there which is why you were going on these licks so when you thought about putting that on your even your baby mama's name on your face like where was your head at to even start touching the face because you know what barriers come with that like I get it I understand the meaning but what barriers come with the like the barriers that come with that face tat how are you gonna move like when you get out, knowing now that you have that on your face? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna not so much on a in a bad aspect. I'm gonna move the same way I did when I when I was out before the face tag. I'm always gonna be on my toes. I'm always gonna be on ten. I just it just certain places that I go and things that I do. I'm not gonna have my daughter around because of the situation and what's going on so no just, we're gonna get to that just a tad bit different but at the same time stay on my toes and watch my surroundings more than i already was no we'll get to that because i do want to talk about your plans you know getting out but just to backtrack though so you've been in there this whole time what have you been doing for like your mental health because i know you write i know that's an outlet for you writing music what else have you been doing in yeah. there just to like stay positive Listening to music, working, working out consistently. Yeah. So what? Uh, basketball. You told me you're playing football now. Like, how did that come? I know yeah, basketball I, is just regular, but the football. I've been playing a lot of basketball. I work. I'm, so we have a track. So I do the track. Every other line, I do five push-ups. Boom! I get up, walk another two lines. Boom! Another set of five push-ups. I do the whole track. So it's like I want to say. 50 to 52 lines on that track. So okay, five times 52 is, I want to say. Don't ask me. I need to calculate it. Don't yeah, know. I, don't, I don't even know. So <laughs> I do it. I do it twice a day. After I play, after I play Bam. basketball, after I do the track, I go play basketball. Boom, okay. I play basketball for like an hour and a half. Then I do my conditioning before practice, before football practice. So I do my conditioning. I do all my stretching, then I hit the football field. Well, once I get on the football field, I'm on the field for like three hours straight. After that, that's when I bust down. The second the second time around the track, hit every – at this time, I'm doing every four lines. Okay. Every four lines. Every four lines, I do five to six push-ups each line. And this every day? And then after, every day, Monday through Saturday. So once I do that – I do, I want to say, roughly 25 to 30 suicides. So, full sprint suicides, no stop. So, yeah. Because I got to work on my, I've been trying to work on my stamina and shit. Because, yeah, I still have the speed, I still have all that, but I want to build my endurance without the drugs. Because on the streets, 
I was still playing sports and running and stuff, but I had a gang of drugs on the inside of me, so it was like... Yeah, being high, like, I know, I know how much you smoke. Shit, I, I know yeah. how much you smoke. So that's my next question. Um, how do you feel about weed right now? Are you going to get out, get back to it? Or, like, how you... For sure. Most definitely. Not, <laughs> not to... Not, not in a bad aspect. No, be, yeah, yeah, just like, be honest. No, for sure, bro. I'm not asking. It's no wrong answer at all. Like, weed is a medicine. You know, it's, it, it also goes into the whole yeah, mental health I, I aspect. As, as a medication, it, it treats my anxiety, my PTSD, my depression, my ADHD. And it helps me eat. It helps me gain an appetite when I'm on the street. And here... For sure. You don't have a choice but to have an appetite as much as you work as much as you work out, you have to consistently feed your body and feed your body. So it's like you gotta balance that out. You gotta eat, sleep, and then work out. Work out, sleep, and eat. Hey, so let me ask you, bro. So I hear I hear what you're doing just to like maintain your mental health, but um I'm I'm sure you have those days where, you know, sometimes it can it can really weigh on you. Have you shed any tears since being in there? Honestly, no, because one thing I've always learned from the streets is you don't you don't cry in prison. You you can't afford to drop tears in prison. So because once that once you do that, it automatically makes you a prime suspect to, or victim to any violence or for sure any anything of that nature, sexual abuse, all kind of stuff. So it's a lot of the plays in. As much as I want to, I just bottle it up and put it on paper. You feel me? So Yeah. No, I got you. I got you. That was real. So being that the only way you can talk to people, you know, is through like the app or, you know, these calls. How what's your take on friendship now? Like a lot of the people you were hanging with on the outside, have any of those relationships changed or not even changed? Like, do you view friendship different since being in there? Or like where where are you at? Very much so because of, because a lot of people that I used to hang out with they, and and talk to and associate with, a lot of them turned their back on me when I when I came when I when they found out I was in prison or in the county. They're like, uh, yeah, we knew this was coming. All right, we cool off of you. So in my eyes, I looked at it as, all right, I'm not worried about y'all no more. I'm I'm cool. I'm a distance myself. Then when I get out, I know or when it's close to because I'm a year to the house now. So. They get ready to, that's when everybody starts to try to come back around and yeah. have a say-so or try to have a say-so in what I do when I come home or where I'm at when I come home. And honestly, I, I can care less for what anybody has to say. Also, if you are riding it from me, riding with me from the beginning. So it's not so much that you have resentment. It's more so just like it is what it is. I'm just not gonna mess with y'all when I get out. But it's not you don't you're not holding yeah. grudges. Okay, I got you. But what's your view on like the? You don't have to go into detail about the politics, but what's your view on that? You know, people from the same place you are. Like, are they are they showing you love, or do you view that any different? Or are you still ready to get out and just you know keep doing what you was doing on the banging shit? Uh, some of them still fuck with me, but excuse my language, but that I, and I have to say it like that. And for the most part, the ones that do, they do. But the other ones, they, they're they pushing for a disciplinary act for where I'm at. Mm. But at the end of the day, I have to tell, I have to tell everybody like this. You're not going to do my time. So in order for me to make sure that I'm coming home, I'm going to do my time where I'm at. Or wherever they send me, I'm going to do my time in the best way I can. Yeah. So... Yeah. I am before I even landed where I was at, I, I I called in, I checked in with everybody from from my hood and my sister and hoods and stuff like that. I told them like, this is where I'm going. What's the protocol like? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to stay? Am I able to do this? They're like, bro, you're first off, you're African American. Second, yeah, you're not no rapist. You're not no chomo. With it, third, we know what your paperwork is. Fourth, we know what you're in there for. Go there, do your time, and come home. Other homies, they started tripping on it. So they're put. some of them are like, they had to tell them, like, the ones that are tripping, they had to get told by certain big homies, like, bro, y'all not going to go do his time, so 
let him go do his time and come home. You know, no, I got everybody you. knows what the deal is with him and everybody knows what he stands for. So mm -hmm. it was one of them kind of situations. No, that makes sense. And uh, right now, you're in the process of trying to get transferred closer, right? Because you're in what, Ion, Ioni or whatever? Yeah, I'm in Ion. I'm trying to get down to Lancaster or something, somewhere that, down that way. And Ion is what, like a good six-hour drive, right? Yeah, six hours and like ten minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 a trip, man. So what's it take for you to um get transferred? Like, what are you waiting on for that? I'm waiting on my annual, so to put in a re uh, transfer request. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that'll be that'll be real good, man, to have you closer. The time, you know, the time is coming, bro. You're actually almost home. So for real, I know you're starting to I say the time is coming where you're actually almost home. Is it a house arrest? Yeah. Is it a house arrest situation or are you just free? No, it's a I have a parole officer, so my second day out, the day after I get out, I gotta go check in, uh, give him my address to where I'm at, give him a phone number. So it's a lot of stuff that I have to tackle after I come, when I come home that first day. So it's going to take me like a cool six, seven hours just to get back to the city because nobody's going to want to drive. If I'm still up this way, nobody's going to want to drive up here and come get me. And so it's like, it's, it's a whole lot that plays into it because if they come up here to come get me, they'll have to leave at like midnight. Oh yeah. One o'clock in the morning. No, I got you, bro. Just keep taking it like step by step with that, man. Like you're almost out, actually, bro. Yeah, it's it's a lot that plays into it. So yeah. Once I get down there, I got to get a phone. I got to go figure out where I'm going, which I'm probably going to my auntie's house in the city, but I don't know exactly just yet. Um, as far as you planning for the future right now, like what are your plans for getting out? Like where you headed? When I get out. And, and when I get out, I already told myself I want to start my own uh, my own candy business because that's what I, that's what I do here. That's how I make ends meet. Out, outside of the support that I get from TV jobs, uh, I've learned how to make my own hustle, which is making prison candy, which is like taffy and lollipops and uh, different different little candy products and stuff. If if that makes sense. No, I got so you. I want to take that with me to the streets. And I want to start my own clothing line, which is, it's going to be called Bad Child District, which is BCD. Because when I first got here, I met a nigga, I, I met a guy in B section, which is, because in our, in our building, it goes A section, B section, C section, and D section. Yeah. So I met a guy in B section. His name was Jagmon. Uh, then I met a guy in C section, which was, his name was Mo. So, and I'm in D section, which clearly stands for the D. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a clothing line called BCD. And that's going to help me remember the two specific people that I hung out with and associated myself with. So I got you. I got you. And uh, for sure, bro, I, I can definitely see you taking that entrepreneur route for sure, man. Like sometimes when there's no way for you, you got to make a way. And I think that's what a, sure. a big part of your and journey that's, has that's been. Honestly, that's honestly my, that's been my thought process. Once, once I knew that I wanted to get my face tatted or put anything on my face, I'm like, I'm going an entrepreneur route because, yeah, it's not. It, it they say it's hard to get a job with face tats, but honestly, it's not hard. It's more so of how you present yourself. It's not about your appearance and what you have on your body or what you're wearing or how your hair is, it's how you present it. So honestly, I could work a nine to five if I really wanted to, but I'm more so on the, I'm my own boss and can't nobody tell me nothing because at the same time, I love, I love doing these podcasts. I love helping mm -hmm. out with the reentry program and I want to make my, I want to run my own candy business. So, and I love my music, so with them three things going and my clothing line, I'm there's there should be no reason that I should have to have a backup plan because some of some people might have listened to my song when I put it in there and I said if I told you that I had a plan B, I lied to you. I only have a plan A. If I told you I had a plan B, I really did lie to you.
because at that point I failed myself with a plan, having a plan B because if I have a plan A, I shouldn't have to have a plan B to rely on because I know what my goal is. And that's always been my goal, which is to be my own boss and have people working for me, not work, me working for somebody else. I mean, I've seen it done. We did a podcast the other day, bros, a young dude, 19, business owner, face full of face, ta- uh, face full of face tats. And, you know, he's doing his thing. So it's possible for sure. Yeah, you could get a nine to five. It limits you with the type of nine to fives you could have. But you could get one if you wanted to as a backup. So um, I respect the mindset. Um, just from being where you are now, though, because what you said, you're 23, right? Yeah. What's your advice to like that 18, 19 year old starting to go down that bad path? Like, because just from me talking to you, like I said multiple times, like you've grown a lot, bro. You've grown a lot mentally. Um, what are your biggest takes right now? Wisdom that you that you've learned from where you are right now on life. Honestly, it's three things that I tell them. First, be true to yourself and be true to who you really are. Don't sit here and try to impress the next person or the girl that you're trying to be with or homies from your hood or whatever the case may be. Stay true to yourself because if, as long as you stay true to yourself, your hood and automatic your hood or your clique or whoever, whatever the situation is, will automatically respect you because you're staying true to yourself. Uh-huh. And I had to learn that from one of the guys that's in my session. He's like, bro, I can see that you're different than these people. They, they, you you maneuver like you don't need anybody. And I told him, I told him like, yeah, I just, I'm staying true to myself because even on the streets, I didn't like to ask for help. So when I, as a father, me asking for help, it made me feel kind of weird. So uh-huh. number two, the more negative energy you put out, the more negative energy will come to you. The streets will eat you up and spit you out multiple times with no cares in the world. Number three, when it comes to living this lifestyle, you got to be either all in or all out. There's no middle point. So, Take it how you just take it how you want to. So, to the young people, stay out this lifestyle because eventually you'll end up in this piece. And then being in here, it's not something that you want to do, especially if you're a, a guy like me that always had everything that he really wanted, that always, that always had money, always had had marijuana yeah. and different things to cope with my anxiety, my stress and anger and always had the, the the connections to the streets and my music and it's all kind of things that can be taken away from you if you take it for granted and that's what happened. I took everything that I had for granted and I, I felt like I couldn't be stopped. No, nah, that's real, bro. That was some good self-reflection. I know it'll be many more lessons to come, man, but um, I respect the the new knowledge and wisdom that's coming out of you. And on my end, I really wanted to say this on camera. Um, I know the days, some days you've called me, some days I've been able to answer, some days I haven't. Some days I'll just be in like a, a, a bad mood from something else that happened during the day, and I may be like, damn, you know, I know he'll probably call me back. But I know it's those times where I may have been the only person that could have answered the phone for you. You know, so it's yeah. for my self-reflection. I'm like, man, um, I'm definitely going to make that due diligence to answer when I can, bro, for real. Because I know I think sometimes it's easy to forget that you're behind those walls. And you may have called five, six for people sure. that day. And you may only just want to hear my voice, somebody from the outside, you know. So um, on my end, uh, I'll make a, a deep, deep, deep change, bro, in trying to just talk to you more, engage with you more, let you know what's going on, bro. Because, you know, we're still out here holding it down. And when you do get out, you know, we got many more resources, you know, music videos, photos. You know, we got entrepreneurs in here that can help you. So just stay positive, man. The time is ticking down and you getting out. You know, we'll be waiting for you. So um, thank you. Thank you for coming on my episode. I really want to do this with you. So I appreciate you, man, for real. Man, I, I, thank, I thank you for the opportunity. So it's been a long time coming. Is there anything you want the people to know? Any shout outs? You're on camera. This going on YouTube, bro. Is there anything you want to get out? Anything? Um, say that one more thing.
thing I want to let the whole world know is take care of your responsibilities while you while you had a chance. Mm. I like that, man. And that, and, that, and that can go in many different aspects of your life, whether it's school, work, your family, what the family, because in here, a lot, one thing a lot of people don't know, because I don't like to speak on it, when I was in, when I lived in Vegas, I did a year in Clark County. I lost my granddad that year that I did in there. I came home, my grand, my granny died the year after that, and now I'm in here, and my dad is on the verge of death. So, mm-hmm. whatever you do, take care of your responsibilities while you can. Love, love the people that love you. Even the ones that dislike you love them from a distance that's one that i really gotta say because at the end of the day anybody can be taken from you at any given second and just to touch on that bro that, that was real deep man um remind me what you said yesterday with that date the date your dad got sentenced versus when you remind yeah, me my, my dad got sentenced for murder august 28th 2003 i got charged and booked august 28th 2023 for robbery conspiracy and grand theft wow man bro break the cycle looney like that's crazy like we can we can really take that a lot deeper on a spiritual level but i'm counting on you to break that cycle man for real i know you learned a lot from this man for sure and and before we for go sure. before we go you gotta at least give me eight bars <laughs> Eight bars, let's see. Uh, let's see. Man, you really put me on the spot right there. <laughs> Always. Uh, let's see. It said, Looney, how's life going? I just want to know. I had to tell the little lady that I'm really living. Uh, I had to tell the lady that I'm really living life. Maybe I'm really trying to come and live life but at the same time i'm trying to run up a bag but if i run up a bag in the wrong way i'm back in these four fucking walls and i can't see if i see evil then i do evil but i have to keep my mind on a steady pace and a steady mind and a steady track because i got a couple kids that i really gotta feed and a couple visions that i really gotta get through something to if hey put put some hey put some tune on it we in there (laughs) straight up Straight up, Looney. Hey, yeah, man. But nah, keep doing your thing, I'm, man. I'm gonna text you with a uh with one of the, one of the bars that's in my song, and I want you to put it at the end of the video. I want you to put a picture of me with that with that bar just written in there, so they can have something to read. Nah, straight up. Hey, huh. we're gonna clip that. That's gonna be a clip in itself, bro. So um, this definitely gonna get a lot of views. I'm putting it out there, bro. We speaking it and doing it. So. We'll have you back on here soon, Looney. Thank you so much, man. I don't want your celly to get mad at you, bro. Thank you for coming through, being on Dojo Sessions, dog. For sure. Thank you. Welcome, man. Love you, man. Stay safe, bro. Bye. Oh, I ain't got to hang up just yet. I still got to <laughs> do one minute more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nah, you good, bro. Yeah, we in here. Hey, this Darnell, this one I told you to remind me of Juan, man. He behind the camera. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hey, he's, he's going crazy with the camera, bro. He's going crazy with it. Photos, videography, everything, man. For sure. For sure. Yeah, Looney, that was that was a good pop. I, I haven't seen nobody else do this. I've seen them do it with still images, but video podcast format, I ain't seen nobody do it, bro.